Hi everyone, I'm Heather Catlin, sitting here with Duncan Jones, the director of Source Code, coming Hi. out April 1st. Yep. So it's yep. not a joke, it's not April 4th. No, it's, it's the real date. <laughs> uh, Jake Gyllenhaal stars in this. Give me a little rundown of what the movie's about. Sure, it's uh, Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> plays a, a helicopter pilot, a guy called Colter Stevens, and he wakes up on a commuter train heading to Chicago. Um, now everyone on this train seems to know who he is, but the person that they think he is is different from the person he thinks he is. Then the train blows up and kills everyone, and then things start getting really weird. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of... Uh... It's contemporary thriller. It's kind of, there's a bit of action in it. There's sort of a love story. It, it kind of has a lot of different, different aspects to it. I've actually seen the movie. I loved yeah. it. But it was kind of reminding me of uh, Groundhog's Day meets Inception, a yeah. little bit of like Matrix in there. <laughs> was that intended? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Jake actually introduced me to the script um, for Source Code. And I, I thought, this is really unique. I haven't seen anything like this in a while. So. Um, I got very excited and I, I talked to him about what I would do with it mm -hmm. and, uh, and he liked the sound of it so we went and made the film. Now Jake is a really fun loving guy and in he this is. movie you know part of his character he plays a really nice kind of witty guy and yeah. the other part is very serious so how did you adapt his personality to the script? Well to be honest what I was trying to do is I was trying to uh, get what I thought was the best out of Jake, the mm -hmm. thing that I really think is, re is remarkable about him. He's such a, I mean he's obviously a really handsome guy but he's a very talented actor very empathetic, you know, mm -hmm. the audience just wants to go with him, I think. And um, we were talking about the old Indiana Jones movies and how ha Harrison Ford, the character that he played, he was kind of this rugged everyman leading man um, who was kind of frustrated with everyone around him. And that's sort of what Jake sort of taps into. Now, you have to be, you have to imagine a lot to make this happen. Yeah. You know, when it goes into the editing room, it yeah. comes alive. So how did yeah. you kind of create the, the picture for your actors? Well, it was, you know, there was, I, I tried to give them as much um, of an understanding of what it was that I was going to do. There was a lot of concept artwork and storyboarding and, mm -hmm. um, and then really, as you say, it kind of comes together in the edit. But I was working with, with two amazing people. Don Burgess, who was my cinematographer, um, and he shot Spider-Man, Forrest Gump, uh, Book of Eli, which came out recently. And then Paul Hirsch, who was my editor. And he's a legend. He did Empire Strikes Back, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, he won an Oscar for Ray. So these were just sort of two, two really experienced guys who, who were kind of backing me up. What were some of the biggest challenges you had to overcome in this film? Um, well, we didn't shoot it on a real train. <laughs> that was a challenge. We shot it on a, on a train that we built up in a soundstage in Montreal. Okay. And um, we had to do that because there are a lot of special effects in the film, over 800 special effects. Wow. And uh, in order to sort of shoot the train the way I wanted to and move the camera in places you just physically couldn't do on a real train, we, we had to build it. Now you, um have a very interesting background. You, tra you told me off camera that you travel a lot because yeah. of your father. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that and how that kind of maybe plays into how, cr how you're uh, so creative. Well, it's kind of, you know, I have a bit, bit of a circle in, in, in my life. I sort of started off as a kid traveling a lot because my dad was touring all the time and, and, and traveling the world. And then things, <coughs> things settled down as I got older and I ended up going to college in Ohio and then graduate school in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And now I'm making movies and I'm traveling again. I'm going all over the world. So it's a yeah, big circle. <laughs> so does your dad comment on your movies? What does he say after you make your movies? Yeah, I mean, he, we had a wonderful time. Like my first film was a film called Moon. Mm -hmm. um, and it premiered at the Sundance Film Festival a couple of years ago. And he came out for that. And that was a really, really lovely experience. I haven't shown him the new one yet. But he lives in New York. So I'm hoping next time I'm in New York, I'll, I'll see if I can get him to come and see it incognito with me at just a local local movie theater. Is that fun? Does that surprise people that you show up and you're like, yeah, David Bowie, oh, that's my dad? <laughs> well, I don't normally do that. <laughs> He's with but, me. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I tend not to bring it up, but, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm, I'm, I, I love him. He's a, he's a very talented man and, and, and he's my dad and he's a great guy. That's awesome. Now, I heard you wanted to do a project called Mute, yes. but you couldn't get the funding with it. So yeah. tell me what you're doing with it now. Well, <laughs> Mute's really tricky. It's a really hard sell in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you may know that you know, when you try and make a movie, especially through the Hollywood system, you need a, an established leading man or woman who's going to help bring the money into the film. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to convince these actors to want to do the film, but the problem with Mute is that the main protagonist doesn't talk at all. Uh -huh throughout the film. <laughs> so it can be kind of hard to convince someone. Good thing you're not paid per line. Exactly. <laughs> so what we've decided to do is we're going we're gonna to release it as a graphic novel because it's a very visual film. Mm -hmm. Again, it's science fiction. And uh, hopefully we can use that to try and sort of uh, convince some people that, that it is a film worth making. Do you think that's a rising trend to put something into a graphic novel? It is. Novel? I know a few filmmakers have done that successfully as well. Uh, I know Darren Aronofsky did it for a film that he did. 
And um, no, I think, I think graphic novels are a really good way to be able to help people visualize what it is that they're, they're investing themselves in. So that would be another kind of sci-fi movie. Is this your it specialty would. or do you want to kind of branch out? It's kind of my specialty right now, but I'm definitely going to branch out. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think my next film is going to be sci-fi and then I'm going to sort of take, go on sabbatical from sci-fi and try some other genres. There's some other things I'd love to do. Now, Blade Runner, they just announced that they're going to yeah. remake that or a sequel. Yeah. Is that something you'd be interested in? I love Blade Runner. It's one of my favorite films, and, and, and uh, I wish them all the best with it. But I, I kind of have my own projects I want to okay. do, and it, it would scare me to actually try and be involved in, in that particular world. Okay. I have my own things which are definitely paying homage to that that, that I, would, I think would be better for me to do. Okay, and what are you working on next? Uh, I'm writing a film right now um, and hoping that uh, you know, it seems to be going very well. There's some people interested in, and hopefully we'll be shooting it by the end of this year, beginning of next year. What are some actors that you are like, you have your eye on? You really want to work with them? Um, there's, a, there's a British actor, a guy called Tom Hardy, who I think is mm -hmm. fantastic. You, you might have seen him in, in Inception. He was, he was mm -hmm. terrific in that. Um, and then George Clooney, actually. I'm a big fan of his. I think he's uh, incredibly charismatic, very talented, seems to be very funny and smart. I'd like to meet him and see if he is everything which I believe him to be, and I'd love to work with him. He's definitely a leading man that will bring the audience. Definitely sure. a leading man. Well, great. Well, it's so nice meeting <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you so nice much for stopping by. Thank you.